How exactly will the book of the Revelation unfold? It's a mystery to some, but to people like Michael Rood and Dr. Doug Hamm, it reads like a movie script. When all hope seems to be lost, then Yeshua is going to come. His feet are going to stand on the top of the Mount of Olives. It's going to open up, and this is when they're going to flee through that mountain valley. In this month's Love Gift teaching, Rethinking Armageddon, Dr. Doug Hamp pieces together the final battle between Yeshua and the Antichrist, with Yehovah's people caught in the middle. It's an epic battle scene you've likely never considered. Rethinking Armageddon is not available anywhere online, but we'll give you this teaching as our thanks when you donate to receive the Love Gift. How exactly will the book of the Revelation unfold? It's a mystery to some, but to people like Michael Rood and Dr. Doug Hamm, it reads like a movie script. When all hope seems to be lost, then Yeshua is going to come. His feet are going to stand on the top of the Mount of Olives. It's going to open up, and this is when they're going to flee through that mountain valley. In this month's Love Gift teaching, Rethinking Armageddon, Dr. Doug Hamp pieces together the final battle between Yeshua and the Antichrist, with Yehovah's people caught in the middle. It's an epic battle scene you've likely never considered. Rethinking Armageddon is not available anywhere online, but we'll give you this teaching as our thanks when you donate to receive the love gift. How exactly will the book of the Revelation unfold? It's a mystery to some, but to people like Michael Rood and Dr. Doug Hamm, it reads like a movie script. When all hope seems to be lost, then Yeshua is going to come. His feet are going to stand on the top of the Mount of Olives. It's going to open up, and this is when they're going to flee through that mountain valley. In this month's Love Gift teaching, Rethinking Armageddon, Dr. Doug Hamp pieces together the final battle between Yeshua and the Antichrist, with Yehovah's people caught in the middle. It's an epic battle scene you've likely never considered. Rethinking Armageddon is not available anywhere online, but we'll give you this teaching as our thanks when you donate to receive the love gift. When we see pictures of boats entering Dover, packed full of supposedly desperate asylum seekers, I want to ask, where are the women? Where are the children? The craft are filled almost exclusively with men, young men. How did they secure the rumored 5,000 pounds to pay for the cost of their crossing? Even by the Home Office's own figures, in 2022, 87% of these people were men. We must be abundantly clear and honest with the British people. These are foreign males looking to take advantage of our soft borders and our incompetent establishment. They are not, in the vast majority of cases, people genuinely fleeing <coughs> war and persecution. Ladies and gentlemen, the liberal Western globalist governments uh, continue to betray uh, Christians and Jews around the world, this time Justin Castro Trudeau's government in Canada.
Uh, the foreign minister has now come out in the United Nations and other places that have been repeating the same statements, uh, talking about the so-called Palestinian state. Now, the definition of the Palestinian state in 2024, um, at, at, on the one hand, could mean from the river to the sea, which means no Jews. On the other hand, means uh, obviously with no clarification whether they mean Gaza or the West Bank or both or who's going to be in charge. And that means that they are caving in to the Islamists not ordinary Palestinians. Now, let's go to this video because we also have some reaction from the other side. The government of Israel is against the creation of a Palestinian state. Violence against Palestinians by extremist settlers and expansion of settlements by Israel in the West Bank continue unabated. And this is unacceptable. Canada supports the creation of a Palestinian state. That is why we are providing security and development support to Palestinians themselves. These people have no idea what they're talking about. Lasting peace with these guys. They don't know what they're talking about because the, the, the conversation to have about the debate about settlers and the settlements has a whole different debate compared to the government of Israel and the, the rest of the state of Israel. These are two separate things. The, the discussion cannot mix everything and pretend that, oh, well, the Palestinians just all, every single one of them just want peace. No, they don't. That's the whole point. It escalates because in addition to that, a further 61,778 people are in a, a dispersal accommodation, smaller private accommodations across the country. That includes former university uh, campuses, student halls and everything else that we have. It's not really just about the migrant hotels. Now, during the election, this prime minister, when he was the opposition leader, said if we were to carry on with this government, we would have the best part of 100,000 asylum seekers in this country, none of them, none of whom are being processed. So the Labour Party, during the election, promised to stop the migrant hotels. Not only they haven't stopped it, they've now come out to make a big announcement that we are going to be extending this for another three years. Three more years. Now, on top of that, more people will be coming in on a regular basis. There is no deterrent to stop the migrant flow and there is no solution to find any new accommodation. So they're just basically kicking the, uh, the can down the road. They, they, they think that if they can just distract us for now, everything will be all right. And they keep talking about the backlog, the, the backlog, the long list of cases that they're still going through, thinking if they go through that, everything will be fine. It won't because every case that you're going through a big big percentage of that are getting approval so which means that more foreigners will be incentivized to come into britain if i were living somewhere else i would say well they are now sorting out the backlog they are going through the applications very quickly and they're all getting approved so i'm just gonna go get on a boat from france and go to england now the backlog speaking of backlog it currently stands at around 87,217 claims. They are awaiting the initial decisions, by the way, within 12 to 18 months. 87,000 people still haven't received the initial indication of what's happening. And they have to wait another year or to a year and a half for the initial decision. Following that, there will be the final decision. Then if they get rejected, technically, then they can do an appeal process. That's going to take another time. And the whole thing is just continuing to get on top of it because more people are coming into the country. I mean, the, the, the other main problem that we have to talk about is the Labour, Labour Party lying during the election. But I don't think anybody is surprised about politicians lying. The Labour Party, um, Labour government source uh, talked to GB News saying, we have inherited a completely failed immigration system from the Tories, including spending over £700 million on Rwanda and gimmicks that didn't work. We are working on clearing down the backlog that they left behind after years of just doing nothing. Now, I appreciate this, but uh, you, you haven't really done anything either. This is the whole point of this. And, and you haven't actually proposed any new system that could replace the current broken system that the Tories created. That there is no urgency from this government because they know that if there is going to be any election, 
people are voting not on this basis. There is a big chunk of the country who are concerned about immigration, but the, the other big chunk, you can just distract them with everything else. Talk about the NHS, talk about the schools and everything else, and just talk about green energy. And then they'll be like, oh, okay, let's just vote for this party now. This is how they keep staying in power. They keep using the mainstream media to distract the public from the ongoing crises around the country. They don't want you to talk about the migrant hotels during the election. They don't want you to talk about grooming gangs during the election. When they're in power, you can talk about it a little bit. Well, when we get close to the election, it's, it's not really in, in the interest of the public, apparently, to talk about these important issues. Let's... Uh, <clears throat> Get some reaction. We got Mike saying, "If it's not an invasion to implement jihad, what is it? Uh, they are literally giving the country over to be destroyed because it's not really necessarily by the Islamic side. The mass migration that we're talking about is not really just about the Islamic side, the Islamic culture. This is the overall problem from everywhere coming into this country from the overall third world. It's not really just about uh, the." Uh, the Islamic side. You also have the Eastern European side. Again, if you if people want to come here legally and stay in the queue and go through the process, that's fine. But even if you stop Islamic immigration completely, you have not fixed the problem because there's still many people, even if they're Christian, even if they're Jews, even if they're atheists, they're still coming into the country. We don't have the public resources. This obsession that if we just stop the Islamic side, then everything's going to be fine, and the Islamic side are the only problem is no. We have a bigger problem than just one side. It doesn't really matter at this point about your religion or your ideology or your skin color. Public resources. We have no housing. We have no schools. We have no healthcare system for new people coming into the country. We haven't even prioritized our own people. And people are still talking about the Islamic side. That's not even the only issue right now. We've got big problems. We've got the cultural side, and that again is not really just about the Islamic culture. All the other cultures are coming in. That includes the American culture. Coming into look at London. London is now turning into New York now, and it's not a good thing. The whole place is becoming Americanized, left, right, and center. There is no spirit of Englishness in London anymore. The whole thing is completely becoming an international hub. And imagine, I always say that, imagine if you go to Tokyo, and if you take a bunch of blonde Germans uh, to Tokyo, to, uh, to Japan, it's not going to end well. And you would say, well, the Germans are civilized. That's irrelevant. You are changing the Japanese culture. It's not a good idea. It's not really about just coming from this country or that country. You will change the nation state as it is. How exactly will the book of the Revelation unfold? It's a mystery to some, but to people like Michael Rood and Dr. Doug Hamm, it reads like a movie script. When all hope seems to be lost, then Yeshua is gonna come, his feet are gonna stand on the top of the Mount of Olives. It's gonna open up, and this is when they're gonna flee through that mountain valley. In this month's Love Gift teaching, Rethinking Armageddon, Dr. Doug Hamp pieces together the final battle between Yeshua and the Antichrist, with Yehovah's people caught in the middle. It's an epic battle scene you've likely never considered. Rethinking Armageddon is not available anywhere online, but we'll give you this teaching as our thanks when you donate to receive the love gift. How exactly will the book of the Revelation unfold? It's a mystery to some, but to people like Michael Rood 
and Dr. Doug Hamm, it reads like a movie script. When all hope seems to be lost, then Yeshua is going to come. His feet are going to stand on the top of the Mount of Olives. It's going to open up, and this is when they're going to flee through that mountain valley. In this month's Love Gift teaching, Rethinking Armageddon, Dr. Doug Hamp pieces together the final battle between Yeshua and the Antichrist, with Yehovah's people caught in the middle. It's an epic battle scene you've likely never considered. Rethinking Armageddon is not available anywhere online, but we'll give you this teaching as our thanks when you donate to receive the love gift. How exactly will the book of the Revelation unfold? It's a mystery to some, but to people like Michael Rood and Dr. Doug Ham, it reads like a movie script. When all hope seems to be lost, then Yeshua is going to come. His feet are going to stand on the top of the Mount of Olives. It's going to open up, and this is when they're going to flee through that mountain valley. In this month's Love Gift teaching, Rethinking Armageddon, Dr. Doug Hamp pieces together the final battle between Yeshua and the Antichrist, with Yehovah's people caught in the middle. It's an epic battle scene you've likely never considered. Rethinking Armageddon is not available anywhere online, but we'll give you this teaching as our thanks when you donate to receive the love gift.